Recupera su saeta para el Oviedo. Juega al medio con Héctor Font. Héctor Font que tiene el balón presionado para la derecha otra vez para su saeta. Se va el primero Néstor. Su saeta levanta la cabeza, pone el centro al área. Balón gol. para Linares, gol. ¡Gol! ¡Del de casi siempre! Well, hello and happy new year to you all. Welcome to the Rail Oviedo preview show, where I'm going to walk you slowly through the week in Oviedo and have a look at this weekend's opponents, Le Grenier. As I'm sure you're aware, it's been a week of change at the Tartieri, with Sergio Aguirre surprisingly resigning, and even more surprisingly, the unknown Englishman, Monty Austin, being chosen to replace him. I bet none of you saw that coming. What does this mean for Oviedo as they go into the second half of the season, three points clear of Rail Murcia? Well, it's very hard to tell. Very little is known about the new man. He has never coached a professional side before, so this has to be seen as a massive gamble by the club president, Jorge Menendez. Our spies in the camp tell us that Austin has been training the first team squad this week, and it's very likely that they're going to line up in an attacking 4-3-3 formation when they play Le Grone on Sunday, a game that you can follow live on Twitter. So, with nothing more I can tell you about Monty Austin, let's have a look at Le Grone. So, Le Grone are currently 10th place in Segunda B, slightly underperforming as the media predicted they would be in the top four this season. As you can see, they only have one win in their last five games. So even with the recent changes at the Tartieri, Oviedo must be favourites to start 2015 with a win. What do we know about their squad? Well, if they continue with the same tactics as they used in their last game, they'll be lining up in a 4-3-3 shape, but it is unlikely they will start with the same 11 players as you can see there. Fortunately for Oviedo, the player considered to be the main man at Le Grenier, their right-back Julio Rico, is still injured, but we can definitely expect to see TT lining up on the right wing. It'll be interesting to see if they go with Camuchu, who has a goal in every other game he has started this season, or Ubif, who is goalless in 14 appearances, but has started 11 times and is quite often captaining the side. As you can see, in their last league game, Le Grenier drew with Leonitha. Le Grenier must have thought they were going to get all three points with Ander Gago scoring in the 84th minute, but Leonitha scored almost immediately to snatch a point. Looking at the match stats to the right, Le Grenier probably walked away grateful not to have been beaten. Let's have a look at what other games are happening this weekend in Segunda B Group 1. On Saturday night, you can see that relegation threatened Astorga entertain mid-table Kurukthoe. And it is Sunday where the action is really taking place. The midday kickoff see third place Ferrell travel to Alibes and playoff contenders Leonisa go to Celta B. Later on, Murphy would expect to see off Compostela with minimal effort, probably still full of confidence having beaten Oviedo 1-0 before Christmas. In probably the closest match to tie of the weekend, 4th place Burgos entertained 7th place Valladolid. So, not the easiest start for Monty Austin in his new role as manager of Real Oviedo, but certainly not the toughest. Expectations will be high at the Tartieri for the 7pm kickoff, which you can follow live on Twitter by following at Real Time Oviedo. Oviedo start the second half of their season three points clear at the top, so champion, the championship is Austin's to lose, and anything other than the league title come May will be seen as failure. We wish him well. Don't forget, tune in live on Sunday at 6.30 to get team news and the build-up to Monty Austin's first game in charge of Real Oviedo. Simply follow at Real Time Oviedo for all the action. Have a great weekend, enjoy the match, and I'll be back on Monday to bring you match highlights. Hala Oviedo.